Hello friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. We're back on the Ovation guitar, the uh, repairing that top. And I don't want to disappoint anyone, but it might be a little bit anticlimactic, to be honest with you, because there wasn't much to repairing it once we decided how we were going to do it. And surprise, surprise, I chose to use yet uh, a different glue than, than one I tested, uh, although it was in the same family as one I tested. But uh, anyway, uh, you'll see how that goes. I also just wanted to admit uh, that uh, I may have been wrong about the mildew inside the guitar. Uh, I like to be honest with my viewers so that they know they're getting the real thing. Uh, you will see that this video starts off with me trying to remove uh, mildew inside the guitar, what appeared to be a mildew, and it really did look like it. <laughs> But apparently it may have been some sort of an overspray or something, and I can't imagine why there would be overspray on the inside underneath top of the guitar. I can't imagine. But uh, I don't think it was mildew actually in the long run because uh, the mildew remover took nothing off. And uh, I've used this stuff many times before, and it usually does just completely get rid of it. So... In this particular case, it may have been some sort of an overspray. It was just in an impossible place to get back and look at it visually other than with the camera. So anyway, long story short, uh, this, this whole video may be a little anticlimactic, and I'm sorry if that's the way you feel about it, but I present them as they fall. So here we go. I'm back to the Ovation guitar, and I've rigged up a little deal here. This was one of those saws I made in one of my earlier videos for reaching up inside and sawing a brace off. So anyway, um, I've got a, a swab uh, uh, super glued to it, and I have some mildew remover here. I've used this mildew remover quite a bit, and I and on quite a few surfaces, and uh, lots of different materials, and woods, and fabrics, and all kinds of things, and I trust it 100% as far as being safe uh, to put it on this wood here. Uh, it doesn't leave any kind of stain or anything, and I'm just going to spray it on the swab and then reach up in there and get rid of that mildew. Okay, I've got the swab pretty saturated, probably a little more than I need, actually, but it won't hurt anything. I've got this lighted mirror up inside there. You won't be able to see what I'm doing, but you can see that I am doing it. And uh, I can see the uh, mildew up in there. And I'm rubbing it around on the mildew, and uh, going up in there a little bit more on the other side now. There was two main places where it was. Just got to find the other one now. It's hard to see up in there. There it is. It's way back there. That are saturated pretty good in that area. That looks good. I think we got her, got her whipped. I don't think we'll have any more problems with that. Just checking to see if I see any anywhere else. There was just two main spots. It looks like that's it. I think we got her. I've gone back and forth with the glue test and everything, and right now uh, the Gorilla Glue seemed to be the strongest, but so many people have cautioned me about the Gorilla Glue. It's going to foam out of there, and I know it will because I, from my test I can tell that. So I have decided, I believe, I'm going to use the Thin Viscosity CA Glue. It was uh, third in the test in terms of strength, and it's really pretty strong. You know, it was the one that the uh, wood actually still stuck when it broke. So I feel pretty confident that the CA Glue is going to be plenty strong. The other thing I like about the CA Glue is it's not going to be hard to get it down in the crack. The one disadvantage of the CA glue is going to be cleanup in this case, but uh, if we tape this off really well, then the cleanup shouldn't be much of an issue. So we're going to tape this off, spend some time taping it off. I'm not going to film that, but I'll, I'll show you just what it looks like just before we put the glue on there. 
I don't have the fancy kind of pipette that fits on the end of the glue bottle, but I do have these and I can suck the CA glue up in here and uh, control it pretty well, I believe. I'm going to, it's going to be a little bit of a race. I'm afraid that the CA glue could set up before I get this all pushed down in here. So we're just going to see how it goes and just go as quick as we can across there and then get this top pushed in. I'm going to push in this side here first. It's sucking down in there. You can just see it. It's, it's going really good. And uh, I believe she's down in there. And I don't think clamping is going to be necessary in this particular case. I'm just going to hold it there and, and rub it together just to tighten up the joint. It looks like it went perfect. Just looks like it went perfect. That CA glue, boy, it sucks down in those places. It's not a problem getting it down in a crack. I do think it was the best choice in this particular case. The only reason I didn't even test it is I didn't have this thin viscosity at the time I did my glue test. I had to wait on it. I just, it just arrived. I think we're good. I doubt seriously that'll come back out of there. I'm going to go ahead and take the tape off. I was able to tape it off very, very carefully with a very fine line. Uh-oh. Bummer, dude. A little bit of CA glue ran up through here. Ah, oh, doggone it. Perfect except right here. Doggone it. I don't know how it ran up underneath a seam or something. It goes everywhere. That's one thing you can bet on the CA glue. If it, if it, if it can, it will. So I'm not worried about the fact that it went inside real well. I know it did that because I was pouring it in there. It's not too bad. Just a little bit right here. Doggone it. It would have been perfect had it not been for that little bit right here. Show you what that looks like. I think you can probably see it there. It depends on how I hold it in the light. It's right in here. Looking at the viewfinder, I'm having trouble seeing it. I don't know if the camera's getting it or not, but it's right in here. I worked with a, off camera, I worked with a piece of 1500 uh, sandpaper and sanded that area and buffed it out uh, or just rubbed it out. And uh, now I'm just putting some of this Renaissance wax over the whole top here. And I'm just trying to blend it together so that it doesn't show up, and I don't think it's going to now. As I may have mentioned a few times before, um, I think wax is a paste wax is a very good thing for your guitar top. It makes them sound better. So uh, it's always a good thing to do that, in my opinion. I like this Renaissance wax because it comes off easier than a lot of waxes. I was always using Min Wax furniture wax, uh, and that's very good stuff. I recommend it too, but uh, it's a little harder to get off. I ain't gonna lie to you, you can see this spot a little bit if you're really looking for it, but it doesn't stand out. I'm not sure the camera will pick it up now. It's pretty good now. But I think I'm just going to work on it a little bit more by hand. But now, um, I don't think you can see it much by hand now where that spot is. And it's about right in here where my finger is, roughly. So it's looking pretty good. It's certainly not real noticeable. It's a shame that it had to sneak through a seam in the tape there. I don't know how it did that. I tried to overlap the seams quite a bit and press them together real good. So, But it, it did sneak through. Like I said, that glue will go in any crack and suck around no more. That's why I wasn't worried about getting it down inside there. It, it'll go down inside there. That's That part you don't have to worry about. I think we're pretty good there. We're going to let that sit, sit up for a while before we decide to do any stringing to it. The uh, 
saddle that came with this obviously has a pickup built into it. There are two shims under here. Ordinarily, I wouldn't do the two shim thing. I would make a new saddle. But we're talking about a highly specialized saddle. Um, could I make one of these? Sure, I could make one, but would it be cost effective? No, I don't think so at all. I don't think I could improve it enough to uh, warrant the effort in this particular case. So I've got the two shims in there. We're going to put this in here. Without the shims, the saddle sits in there so deep, you, the strings would not make contact. So the shims are there, and now the saddle looks like it will make contact with the strings. We're going to start that and see where it takes us. We may have to do something different here. I don't know. The saddle's not real tight in there either, but again, because of the way it's made, there's not much I can do about that. Uh, there's a possibility of maybe putting a shim in front of the saddle to keep the saddle tight. I don't know. I might have to do that. This uh, pickup will come through this side hole. Just to give you a better look at that again, there's what the side hole looks like. And we're sliding this into that slot. But first, we have to go into this and uh, plug it in. There looks like there might be a connector here. I better look inside there to make sure nothing else is disconnected. There probably is. So let me look in there and I'll bring you back in a second. I looked over pretty good inside and the only, there are two wires. Uh, one comes from the pickup and this one here comes, I guess, from the tail pin. I didn't really look in there for that to see where it came from. But there's two different size plugs so you can only put them in the right place. So. Uh, what I was actually looking for was just to make sure there wasn't a connection for this four prong connector right here. Um, I guess that's for diagnostics or something like that. Don't really know for sure. All right, we're gonna put this in here and then there's a screw that has to be turned to lock it in place. So we will do that. These screws are supposed to catch on something, so uh, spin them until they draw that up. They should have a, uh, I mean, I see the flap that turns around and the flap has done its thing, but it hasn't drawn up tight to anything yet. Getting close. I think I can feel it now. There it is. Yeah, and I think I can feel it over here. Yep. There we go. Okay. Don't want to over tighten it because we're just talking plastic here, so just want to make it snug. It's good and snug. I've put a new 9-volt battery in here for the customer's benefit so he knows that that's been replaced. And I am going to plug in the module here, and it, it should just plug right in, I believe. Never done one of these before in my life, but it looks like it should just plug right in. And... Uh, that is, if you hold your mouth right, it looks like. So it looks like you do have to hold your mouth just right to get it to plug in. There it is. Okay. Looks like it's in there. And it looks correct. Now we'll string it up and see where that takes us. We've got the strings on it. And I'm glad to tell you that it sounds real good, and obviously so far this is holding up just fine. I'm going to keep this in the shop for a couple days, and I'm going to tap on it like this lightly with my finger. Now make sure you don't ever do this with a fingernail. I don't have fingernails sticking out past the ends of my fingers. But anyway, I'm just tapping on it. That's uh, simulating, you know, that extra vibration and stuff. And uh, if that's going to pull loose with this under string tension, that's when it's going to pull loose is when you hit, hit those extra vibrations like that. Now, I'm not hitting it hard enough that I'm going to break anything. But, you know, on the other hand, that's, that's the time when it would pull loose if it's going to pull loose. So we're going to leave it in the shop for a day or two and kind of play with it and play some music on it and tap around on it a little bit and see how that goes. But before we do that... Uh, we're going to do a little bit more of a setup on this. I've got my 18 thousandths pick here, and uh, I can tell the strings are a little high, actually. Not real high, just a little high. So I'm going to adjust all that, and I'll bring it back. I've already reduced the height of these four strings on the treble side, the bottom four strings, if you will. And now I just thought I'd show you that how high the, like, it's not crazy high, but it's just high. 
Like if you hit that, I can slide this pick under there and you notice you don't hear any vibration. See? Now, if it's set up right, that should either stop, you should either hear it vibrate or it would stop, stop the string from vibrating altogether. But see, you can tell that that's very high because at 18,000, if I hit it really hard, it'll vibrate on the pick. But I have to hit it really hard. Anyway, that's just to get a good example of what I'm talking about on the setup here. If you again, most people would use a a nut file for this. I just have my own method of doing it, and and I don't recommend this method to anybody else. But I'm used to doing that, and I can make the bottom of that hole just as round as the nut file will. Okay. Anyway. That ought to be a little closer, but it's probably still high. Bring it back up to pitch here. Now it's buzzing, see? It's buzzing a little bit, not too much yet, though. We're gonna, we're gonna drop it a little bit more. be real close. Now you can tell it's... But it's still high. I can still move it just a hair before it touches the pick. It's just a hair though. that it's, it's right there you know and when I slide it in it's basically right there it's not lifting the string and but yet you can't really push it down either so you can see we, we adjusted that quite a bit now this next one is not quite as bad but it needs adjustment as well what I do is I get down and I look at it and I can tell how round my bottom is there and uh, adjust it Still a little bit high. It's just about right. It it could it, it could be a hair lower, but it's not. It doesn't need to go any. I mean, we're only talking like a thousandth of an inch at this point. So I mean, it's really close. So we're going to call that good, and I mean, you can barely see the strings go down when I press on it now. I mean, like, it's just almost touching. But that really makes a difference on, on how easy it is to play. Let's tune her up, and then we'll play you a song. Well, on closer inspection, I actually did get the B string a hair too low. I'm going to make a new nut for it. This is a plastic nut. The customer kind of requested a, a, an antler nut anyway. Ordinarily, I don't change the nut unless there's a problem. Well, I created a little problem there. I got it just a hair too low on the B string. So we're gonna make a deer antler nut and uh, it'll be better anyway. Well, the ovation is all fixed up here. The top's nice. Uh, we cleaned up that spot there where the glue came out. You can barely, barely tell it at all. Just for the people who keep track of these things, the model is an S. 861 Balladeer Special. I've checked the action back here and it's at uh, 80 and 90 thousandths which is about where I'd normally set them. It's a good tight 18 thousandths up here now and uh, we made the new deer antler nut there that uh, turned out really nice and let's just see what she sounds like. I feel like I need velcro under here and velcro on my pants to keep it from sliding off. I'm not used to holding one like this. <laughs> We've had the good fortune and great blessings of the Lord to have known one another here below. We shared each other's sorrow, we shared each other's joy. One glorious day, the Lord saved our soul. Each day brings us closer to those heavenly portals. It's 
by the grace of God that's where we're bound but if you go before I do rest assured I'm coming to we'll go home together on the cloud and when the father tells the son go and get the church and that cloud starts down toward the earth all God's children will arise he'll be coming for him We'll go home together on a cloud. It's got that nice bowly sound. Uh, it's a nice guitar. And uh, I know there's a lot of folks that don't care for the plastic back, and some of them sound real good, some of them don't sound so hot, but this one sounds pretty nice. I think it's a pretty decent guitar. It's well made, the top's really nice. Got a real nice piece of wood in it. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching.